Hello everyone, welcome to Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. Today we've got, um, well, including myself, we've got four different locations we're doing inter an interview from. Um, we've got Ga uh, Gowdy's in Brisbane, and she's got Somer Somerset on. Um, and we've got two people from Somerset. We've got Anthony Quinn, he's the Managing Director, and we've got Lynn Shanks, he's the Global CEO of Somerset. And then we also have back for a second time, we have Michael Copper, he is the President and CEO of Centresis CNP. Gentlemen, welcome to the show, great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully I didn't get everybody's nerves going, but it took, it took us a little while to get things going. Um, Thank, thank you for pretending to be patient, at, at very least. <laughs> um, let's let's start with well, we've done we've had Centresis on the show before, so I want to get Somerset um, just get a, a sense of who they are. So maybe I'm thinking uh, maybe Lynn, can we start with you to just give us a snapshot of Somerset? Sure, sure, happy to do so. Uh, Somerset International, uh, we were formed in the U.S. in 2008. We later uh, uh, began our business in Australia in 2015. Uh, we actually commenced our operations on a global basis in 2016. Basically, we saw an opportunity across the mining industry to fundamentally transform both the productivity and the sustainability in mineral processing as well as the management of mining waste. What we did is we began working with our technology partner, Centresis. We brought together the world's leading people in technology and focused on delivering higher value in mineral processing and better and more sustainable tailings management. The next thing we did is we created a quite unique business model. We design, we invest in the systems, that are required to deliver these outcomes at our cost while we deliver the new sources of revenue for the customer. The fact that we are also paid on our performance, it really aligns the interest between us and our, our partners mm -hmm. while driving continuous improvement throughout the entire uh, course of our business. Our business through our business model, we also provide this as a service under long-term partner agreements, and this has proven to be quite quite effective. Since we actually engaged and uh, started our business, we have expanded now across uh, eight different countries. We have uh, over thirty operating uh, sites and systems in place, and uh, <laughs> are continuing to grow. Let's talk about our heavy industry tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide, and Geograph, solving customer challenges through innovation and design, higher performing parts, engineered solutions, on-time spare parts supply, and high quality repairs. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. Solving the complexities of operational efficiency, safety and compliance, and asset management in mining can be a significant headache. Madison Technologies understands these challenges, and with over three decades of industrial communications experience, they're not just a supplier, but a transformative partner in digitization. Madison Technologies accelerates the digital journey of their clients, and together with global technology vendors, they deliver practical real-world solutions. Visit madison.tech to discover how they can help you unlock future potential with Mining 4.0 Solutions. Revolutionize your mining operations with MassPro's engineering excellence. Their engineering talent can transform your mining machinery, supercharge your productivity, and improve your equipment optimization. Your success is their mission, and they're prepared to take your mining operations to new heights by maximizing efficiency, safety, and ore extraction like never before. Head to masspro.com.au for further information. If you're treating refractory gold or complex ores, then you need how to leach difficulty or varying feeds and recover more. It's packed with cases and papers on Albion process leaching technology, but it also has the world's first online calculator. It's free and you'll learn what capex and opex you'll need for Albion process to treat your feed. You need Albion process to liberate your refractory locked gold. To get your pack and use the free calculator, click the link in the description below. Anthony, I want to, I mean, we're going to, we, again, we got a lot to dig into and we, we want to get everybody in, but Anthony, I'd like to bring you in here for this one because, um, can you paint us a little bit of a picture of the environment, the Australian market, um, that you're in? 
Well, we're active uh, um, across the Bowen Basin in Australia. So we started up in 2016. That was our first operation. Uh, we work very closely with uh, Centresis. All of our installations use the um, the technology that we've developed uh, um, for, uh, with Michael and jointly continue to improve that development. So we have uh, six operations currently. Um, they range in size from a very large scale uh, to smaller scale. It really depends on the installation where we're operating. Um, we have uh, our most recent project is under development uh, that commenced earlier this year and we will we'll be finishing that in December this year. So that'll be commissioning in December. Uh, we work very closely with our customers. We integrate seamlessly with their operations. That's one of the great benefits of what we do. Um, there's no downtime. Uh, so we can be in building a large scale project and there's no interference with their operations. Um, we have very deep mining backgrounds, all of us, um, over more than 30 years. So we understand the mining environment. We understand how to integrate with our customers' facilities. And we do so in a way that they have no downtime. So that's one of the great uh, uh, benefits of what we do. And the product we capture is very high grade product. So currently that's going out, being sent out to tailings as a waste uh, stream. What we do is capture that product before it gets there and we put it onto the customer's product belt. So it just integrates seamlessly with, with the uh, uh, customer's operations. I, I want to really, I'm, I'm going to give a really simple explanation, then everybody can correct me when I get it wrong, but I'm going to give it a try. So, and that's what I, because I was having trouble understanding what the process was. So you're take you're basically redirecting some of the product out of the process and then distributing it back in after it goes through your process. That's why it's, it's right, because I saw it, it's sitting, actually, it looks like it's almost sitting on the side of the production. Well, Do I have that right? Uh well, yes. well can, if I can, yeah, and yeah. if I can help clarify that, yeah. you know, our, our, what we do is actually quite simple. When when you have a mineral processing plant, you have a waste stream that must be disposed of. Right. We take that waste stream, we design, develop, install a system that extracts out the remaining minerals that are in that waste stream. We take that those minerals and we put them on a conveyor belt that goes to the customer's product, and it's sold. It creates right. new revenue that otherwise was being thrown away. Right. We then take what's left of that waste stream. We dewater that waste stream mm. so that it doesn't have to go to a tailings dam. It can be co-mingled with the coarse refuse and disposed and dry stacked. So, you know, the, the benefit of what we do is that we look for the value. We create a revenue stream that in most cases and oftentimes pays for the cost of dewatering and dry stacking the tailings. That's what's unique about what we do. So, and did you partner with Centresis right from the very beginning? What's the story there? You touched on it right at the intro there, but I wanted to clarify, and then it maybe, maybe Michael, if you get a chance, um, to sort of you and Lynn can kind of walk us through the story of that. Yeah, I'll jump in here and then let, let Michael add to it. But, but we partnered with Centresis right out of the bat. We went in and we evaluated. Uh, uh, Centrifuge companies on a global basis, we quickly realize that Centresis is indeed the 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 world leading uh, uh, manufacturer of these technologies. Uh, so we partnered right off the bat. We began working with Centresis, developed a centrifuge that was that's designed specific for the purpose that we're using. The the very difficult duty. Uh, of dealing with uh, minerals and mineral processing. So, uh, yes, we, we started with Centresis right off the bat, and we have an exclusive uh, uh, partnership between the two of us that where we work together and uh, uh, to develop and, and, and use uh, uh, and work with each other to, to find these solutions. Michael, I I'll turn it over to you from there. I think what we did actually was quite interesting uh, when some of us was looking for a partner and I think we had to, A, we had the technology, B, we showed the flexibility as well as the willingness to improve the product um, as we walk along. I mean, based on the first machine we, we started together, 
as a team with the expertise of Somerset, the expertise in for St. Teresa's and the centrifuge, we developed a machine which is very robust. I mean, we expected uh, on the beginning, we expected times before we have to rebuild machines of about 8,000 hours. We are up to 20,000 hours now in operation, which wow. is great an improvement on upcast. So that's why the partnership works. The partnership is basically Somerset has the technology in the mining. They're all expert at it. We have the technology on a centrifuge. And so therefore the end product of the equipment is improved. And so therefore the bottom line for everybody involved is improved. And if I can add to Michael, you know, there uh, have been uh, several different centrifuges uh, other than Centresis that have been trialed outside of Somerset, uh, trying to accomplish the things that we're actually accomplishing and, and have been successful with. Uh, I'm not aware of any that have succeeded. So the partnership between Somerset and Centresis to refine the the design and the robust uh, construction operation of that centrifuge really drives our business. Hey, mining enthusiasts, registration for CIM Connect 2024 Vancouver from May 12th to 15th is now open. Last year, this convention had over 6,800 participants from 60 countries, with 1,796 delegates, 702 booths, and 320 presentations. Secure your spot and register now at convention.cim.org. CIM Connect 2024, where quality and innovation define the experience. Bentec Group is an industry leader when it comes to design, engineering, and manufacturing. Bentec specializes in engineered safety and efficiency equipment such as access platforms, heavy-duty workbenches, work stands and trestles, material and equipment storage, and a range of lifting and handling solutions to maximize safety for your personnel. But that's not their only area of expertise. Bentec also sp- supply high-performance OEM replacement parts for mobile equipment. Bentec's Rocks Mining Parts are built better, eliminating downtime and maximizing efficiency. Visit bentecgroup.com.au today to explore their range. Cleario Custom creates 3D and immersive experiences, presentations, and apps. Use this amazing technology to promote projects or products, communicate plans and outcomes to stakeholders, train your employees and customers, hold virtual meetings around the world with your project's data. For infrastructure, environmental, and industrial projects, Cleario's expertise converts your spatial data into holographic 3D scenes or full applications that tell your story in a compelling and intuitive way. It's time to join the metaverse for the real world. Learn more at Cleario.studio. And what is the difference? And I'll let both of you answer that question. What 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 is the level? I mean, obviously, the, the quality behind it. But I, I'm trying to get into some specifics. What gives it that extra ability to, to be able to, to operate in the right environment? I mean... The bottom line is we started a machine which has is a capability of th- operating at 3000 Gs. We are not operating at 3000 Gs in the mining, mm. but we have the capabilities of doing anything we have. On top of that, we the machines are built mechanically to be repairable. So meaning basically we don't wow. minimize ball thickness. We go uh, safety factors very high. So the, uh, it's basically, if I learned, when I learned one thing from Somerset, in the, especially in the coal mine, if it can't be repaired with a hammer and, a, and something like uh, a crescent wrench, don't even come here. So we brought a very sophisticated machine, which has to last in a mine, which is very robust, very crude, and doesn't love anything. They just have production. So therefore, we had to develop the machine with thicker materials, heavier equipment, um, specifically to maintain the load in the centrifuge, which we are the only one who has the hydraulic drive on our centrifuge, which makes which makes the machine realize, hey, I'm overfed, too many solids or not enough solids. And then the machine adjusts itself for the operation. So those are a lot of the advantages. In, a, in addition, what you mentioned before is the wear characteristic of the wear items we have. I mean, solid thick tungsten carbide protection, solid tungsten carbide wear nozzles. Everything is in in the highest protection mode as we know it as of today. It's been purpose-built for the mining industry in, in summary. But what we're also finding in its application, it's 
very, very reliable and very effective at what, at what it does. So our availability is in the very high 90s. So we're operating this equipment uh, over 98% of the time. It's partly the technology and partial, uh, partly the commercial structure that we have in place. But we use it uh, for the recovery of ultrafine particles, sub 40 microns, as low as four microns. That's where a lot of the value is in minerals and in mineral recovery. It's very effective at, at that recovery of ultrafine particles, but also we found that in other applications, it's, it can separate uh, or, uh, or classify particles to as low as four microns. And that's really important in the mineral uh, sector because a lot of what you find in that particle size range or fraction uh, are clays and slimes, which you don't want. So being able to separate those out effectively and reliably um, at high operating hours means that the performance of your mineral processing is very greatly enhanced. And that's one of the great benefits we see in addition to the solid liquid separation for product recovery and water supply recovery. I, I think there's one more thing that needs to be said as well. And that is that the relationship between Somerset and Centresis is truly a partnership. Uh, the equipment, as Anthony said, was designed for, for purpose. It's fit for purpose. But it's a continuous, uh, imp continually proven process. We've taken the learnings that, uh, over the last eight years. Centresis continues to make refinements within the equipment. When we identify a project and a scope of what we're trying to achieve, we work with Centresis to make modifications inside of the equipment that allows it to achieve our objective, you know, uh, if at all possible. I won't go into those details because those are those are quite proprietary. But but that's what makes the relationship quite unique. It it, it we truly work together to take uh, the best in class technology and adapt it to the scope and objective that that we're we're trying to achieve. Going back to the beginning with with Somerset, um, where. Where was the tech? Did the technology get developed out of? What was the whole start before the company, before the partnership started? What's the backstory of that? I, I I'll answer that question. I think the 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 process that led to the need for the technology developed through uh, uh, another business that that was uh, we were engaged in. Mm. That business required for a feed product, a very fine, very fine coal product. Uh, we recognized early on, our technologists uh, recognized early on that, that that could be achieved by recovering this ultra fine product that was being thrown away at, at, at coal beneficiation plants. So from there, if set down to decide what's the best technology, the most effective technology to be able to do that. And we quickly uh, arrived at the fact that it was a, a centrifuge, that if it could be adapted and made fit for this purpose. So that's kind of what led to the, the need uh, for a centrifuge. From that, the actual Somerset business grew. We recognized not only do, does our business need a fine coal product, the industry needs it because the industry is wasting this product. So there is a business that, that we need and should uh, engage in that improves the efficiency of beneficiation. So, From there, we've now expanded into other minerals and, and, and all the things we've been talking about. But uh, that's where the original process began. Could you give me some, like, just a range, to, just for the audience to kind of get a picture of it? When you're talking about like fine coal waste, what what amount of waste are we talking? And 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 I just want to go circle back to the earlier point. It's not just the the waste, but it's the type of waste because it's going, it's being, um, it it's exiting in liquid form as opposed to dry forms. So you got tailings, ponds, and all that sort of thing. Can you sort of detail what are the numbers i know it's different i'm sure on every site but what just an approximate of how much waste we're actually talking about here well what what we're actually are seeing across our operations uh in the various minerals is that we uh typically see anywhere from five to ten percent gain in sellable product 
And wow. what that what that means is is that in the amount of waste that has to be disposed of into the environment is uh, often reduced by uh, 10 to 20 percent. May I say something in the in addition to this? Yes. Um, when we started out with the coal processing, and um, which started the whole ideas where we want to go, we had a trifactor, and you, Lynn, you might talk a little a little bit about that too about warrior is the trifactor is basically the fine coal has been thrown away into lagoons the fine coal then oxidized and is worthless to anybody so therefore um we have an increase on tailings because the fine coal is added to the tailings in the lagoons so therefore the amount of waste has been increased as well as um we have seen now the trifactor is A, we recover the fine coal, which is not going into ponds anymore. We also reduce the amount of waste going into the ponds. As a matter of fact, in the, the next step on that one is by dewatering the um, by dewatering the tailings, we recover a lot of water, which we need back for the washeries. So that's is a trifactor. You see that. So not only that we have an an operation where we recover lots of fine coal, we reduce the amount of waste overall, and we recover water, which is needed in all kinds in the world for different mining operations. So that was the starting point. Yeah, our, our focus is very simple. And to simplify what Michael just said, you know, the first question is how can we deliver a better value uh, outcome in the mining space, reduce the footprint, and the environmental impact of mining waste. That's really, that's really our objective. We do that really, as Michael said, through three different methods. First, we improve the productivity of the mineral processing by separating out the un, unwanted and ultrafine particles, classifying it to be able to make those valuable minerals available uh, to be captured. Next, we valorize that product from the waste stream, put it onto the product belt, and then we take what's left, remove the water, give the water back to the plants to improve sustainability, and then dispose of the waste in a dry stackable form. Yeah. One, one point is that ore grades uh, on a global basis are declining the, the quality of those. So miners must continue to extract more of the mineral to produce the same amount uh, of sellable product. That lowers productivity, it increases costs, and increases the amount of waste that has to be uh, disposed of into the environment. That makes what we're doing even more important to, you know, in, in today's environment. You can increase productivity by adapting new technologies, controlling your spending, your operating costs. We've chosen to do all of the above. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Yeah, and Anthony, I want to bring you on this uh, specific. Well, actually, it doesn't have to be specific to Australia because there, there's places that have been hit by drought, um, like Chile. I think Morocco's had issues. Um, there's been a few things going on, but th the water management side of it that seems to be uh, uh, from other episodes we've done. There's a major pain point there. It, has that value? I mean, all those values are high, but. Has that value, are you noticing an increase in that part of just the demand for, for more water efficiency? Yeah, and, and let me jump to, in I, and clarify one thing before yeah, Anthony oh, starts, sure. if I could. While Anthony is manager director, he is in Australia, Anthony also sits across our global team focused on the management and uh, processing of, of mine tailings. So, right. so Anthony's focus is not just in Australia. Uh, our, our, our lead technology uh, team is based out of Australia, of which Anthony heads that up as well, just to, just to be clear. That, that's probably, it probably helps me open up my questions a little bit. More. So yeah, so thank yeah. So, okay, Anthony, we got you. Yeah, so Anthony, same, same question, but yeah, let's look at it at a global scale as well. Look, uh, water is uh, critical. It's a critical resource uh, in, in Australia, in the U.S., um, in Basically, most mining regions around the world, we find minerals typically are in very dry uh, regions. Uh, you mentioned uh, Chile. Um, I think 80% of their production um, is water stressed. They have operations in the wow. Atacama Desert. Uh, Chile has, had, has been in long-term drought. So water scarcity is definitely 
a, a, a major issue, um, but you need water for mineral processing. So what, what uh, um, you mentioned Morocco as well. Um, they've had the worst drought they've had in 30 years. Their water storage is at, are at something like uh, 20% and they're a major producer of uh, phosphate, um, copper in Chile. So we're seeing that around the world, Australia as well, US as well. Um, water availability and there's competing demands across you know, urban use, um, mm-hmm. agricultural use and mining use. And so, so how do you do that better? And we, one of the things we saw is the opportunity um, to recover uh, water, reusable water, sustainable water from tailings. Um, all mineral processing, it, it, needs, uh, um, it needs water uh, to do that processing. Um, so rather than throw it out, have going to tailings dams, we saw the opportunity to recover the water by, through li- um, solid liquid separation. That's where the centrifuge uh, comes in. Um, tailings dams are also a major issue for the mining industry mm-hmm. uh, because of the, uh, some catastrophic uh, accidents in uh, uh, tailings dam failures and also the environmental footprint of tailings dams. So where we can reduce the need or eliminate the need for tailing stands. We think that's a, a, a wonderful thing in the mining industry. That leads me to a question, actually, um, that is, is market adoption? Because what you say about tailings dam, we had one here in, in BC um, that, that got breached. There was no fatalities on that one, um, as some of the other ones have, but it was, it was a, a major um, issue here in British Columbia, where I am. And... I'm wondering about the adoption uh, of the technology um, because I, I don't know how many tailing spots <laughs> there are globally. You, maybe you have those types of numbers. Um, but is is just where where are you at with it, just at a global scale trying to get it out to the market, get it adopted? And I guess that would lead to the question, how do you connect with all these mines and all these operators um, and, and help them understand the demand for the technology. I, I think there's going to be a big shift in the way mm. we deal with tailings. Um, we're seeing that now, and I think that's going to accelerate that shift in the way we 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 dispose of waste in the mining industry. And it has to happen. Um, Lynn will give you an example later of where we're doing this. But the, you know, there are over eighteen thousand uh, tailings dams throughout the world in 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 the resources uh, sector. Over three and a half thousand of those are uh, active, um, and I think uh, from a community perspective, there's less appetite for any new tailing stamps. And uh, um, Warrior is a great example of what we can what we can do when we're demonstrating that. And we're also seeing here in Australia there are a, an increasing shift to the dry disposal of tailings, particularly because, getting back to your original question, water is such a valuable resource that if we can recycle and sustainably manage water resources that's uh, that's a big improvement for the mining industry yeah maybe let's talk about a specific example if you have one on hand um, because it would be nice to sort of give the audience a real world scenario that you're you're dealing with or have dealt with uh, yeah I'm, I'm happy to to jump in and, and and talk about that a little bit one of the strategic partners that uh that we have joined up with uh over the last three years has been warrior met it's it's a high-grade metallurgical uh, coal producer located in the United States, actually down in Alabama. Uh, Warrior uh, realized and through their innovative thinking that they needed to improve on their their methodology and their reliance on tailing stems, mm. and they wanted to improve their their self sustainability with regards to to water. So they came to us. We entered into a, a partnership with them about three years ago, uh, and we sat down and, and developed a plan. What we did is we developed a three-phase plan. The first phase, we went in. They, they're up, they operate three processing plants. They have a fourth one that's under construction right now. So the first phase, what we did, we went into each of those plants. We designed a system. We built, installed a system, and we now maintain and operate that system where we did exactly what we've been talking about. We took that tailing stream. The first thing we did is we extract, found, developed a system to extract the valuable mineral from that was still remaining in that waste stream. 
that couldn't be captured with the technology that's available out in the marketplace outside of what we're doing. We generated a product. We actually improved their product that they're selling by about five to 10%. So we improved their sellable product by five to 10%. Wow. We, so, and, and we developed that across each of their three plants. We then moved on to the next phase and we're in phase two. Now we developed a system that took that remaining waste that they had been depositing into tailings dams. We designed built and we now operate a facility that ex that removes about 80% of the water from those tailing streams. Give, we give it back to the plant. They immediately reuse it, which improves their self-sustainability. And then they take that product that we have dewatered, mix it with their uh, coarse refuse and dispose of it, dry stack it and eliminate their tailing stamps. So, so uh, uh, we've continued to move across that. In that process, the mineral that we, the additional mineral that we uh, extract, give back to them as product, way more than offsets the cost of dewatering the tailings and moving away from tailings dams. So not only uh, does it cover for their cost of tailings, dewatering and elimination of tailings ponds, it also gen still generates excess revenue. So, so that's, that's, that's our game. That's what's unique about us and our business model. Warrior didn't have to invest anything up front. We take the risk. They pay us based on our performance. So with our unique business model, we eliminate uh, the risk that would be for, for the, uh, the client under traditional investment scenarios. Right. In our traditional investment scenarios, you identify a need, you go out, buy it, hope it works. Yep. In our case, we design a system, we install it, and you only pay us if it works. So it, it, that's what makes us unique. Michael, when you first heard about their proposed business model, what were your thoughts on that? Our thoughts on it was, A, the business model worked for us. And in the beginning, you know, <laughs> we... We looked. We looked. Okay, what can we do, and how we can, uh, how can we work together? And um, mm. for us, it was more in the direction we know our centrifuge will work on the products. We just have to make sure the model can be proved, proven, and also how we can improve the equipment to withstand for longer operation time. I mean, up up cost operation cost was reduced over the last four or five years when we in operation, and um, so. It was a, it was a, the trials first with a smaller machine and then with bigger machines. It was that was a marriage made in heaven. Actually, we work very close together. The relationship between the companies is perfect right now, and um, I think it's a lot of things to come. And um, the other thing which, which was interesting and important to me is when these systems were installed. These systems were independent from the mining facility. So yeah. what someone said. What Somerset did, they installed the system right next, right next to the, the original building. And then as soon as we were ready to walk, run, the, the stream was converted over and we never, we never stopped the mine to work. And if we fail for any reason, if we have a problem or so, nothing is being lost. And thanks God we haven't had that, like Lynn said before. Our uptime is in the upper 90%. So that is incredible profit positive so i this is a great way how partnerships are developed and work well together you know and and the other thing too and michael touched on this is you know it's part part of our ip as we develop very comprehensive control automated control programs mm. not only can you monitor these systems remotely you can actually control them remotely uh you know you you collect data on a continuous basis you can always look for and find ways for improvement. And, and they're automated to the point, as Michael said, where that in the event of a failure, hopefully we'll never have those, but, but the, things are mechanical. They will eventually fail. Everything reverts back to the way it was before. 
and uh, uh, without interruption. So, so uh, we're, we're we're very strategic in how we design these systems and 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 install them. And, and Anthony, you may have something you would like to add to that. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, yes, uh, Lynn, we we um, we actually don't sell our equipment either. We we don't build it and then sell it. We 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 own it. What we do is provide a service. And we work in long-term partnership with our customers. So we provide the service of mineral recovery and, and, and tailings management. And we do that uh, hand in glove with our, with our customers. So uh, that, that means that we've got very, very strong incentives because it's our capital that we're putting in. We've got very strong incentives to get it right and to ensure that we maximize performance because that's how we get paid. Uh, so the incentives are, are really strong in terms of our alignment with our, our customers, their objectives, and our objectives. We don't get paid if we don't perform. Uh, it put simply, um, so so I think there's a um, uh, coupled with the technology. I think the point that uh, Lynn and Michael raised before is we continue to invest in our technology and to improve the technology, and we couple that with other technology so we maximize recovery we maximize performance and we that's an ongoing um uh, thing for us yeah and that that actually leads me to the two two questions that i want to close out with and and one of them is the assessment of a project then so are you coming in like you you mentioned lynn that you did uh that all three of the um now i'm drawing a blank on the, the warrior met project um with with warrior met that all three um in in phase one worked so you said like eighteen thousand tailings ponds globally i think you said is it applicable to every operation do you have to assess do you need to see their recovery do you need to test materials what's the process of making sure it is a good fit if you're making that investment as well go ahead go ahead anthony if you would outline our our assessment process yeah and yeah, yeah that's a very good point very good point Yes, it, it's it's a great question because it's not there's not one size fits all. You can't just walk into a site and say, "Hey, here's, here here we've got a system. We're just going to put it in." Yeah, we 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 work from the very beginning. So we're, when we we need to understand the plant, uh, the the mining operations, the plant, how it works, how it's set up, because all plants are uh, are different in terms of their configuration. Um, we need to understand what the tailings material is. So we actually spend a lot of time studying tailings, understanding the, the characteristics of the tailings, uh, the, the size fraction in the tailings, what it's made of, the chemical properties of the tailings. So we go to that level in you know, deeply understanding uh, uh, what it is we're dealing with and where. Uh, and, and once we understand that properly, then we'll design a, a system that's specific to any, given, to any given site to ensure that we get the best results there. Uh, and that takes some time. And we invest that time so that we can do it while we have um, systems that are, uh, are used at all sites, such as the um, centrifuge, we will design it specific to any given site so it's fit for purpose. And, 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 and Anthony, we also add, we, we also have a tailings development center there in, in Brisbane where we bring uh, tailings material from all over the world. And, and, uh, as part of that assessment process, we actually put it through our equipment. So when we go to site, mm, when we do take on a project, there's no doubt in our mind it works. I see. So you're actually putting up these testing facilities and, and th this is tested before it goes into production then. Absolutely. As, right. As we discussed before, every, every facility is different. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we have done in the R&D facilities, one in Brisbane and one in the U.S., we basically get mining materials, tailings in, and we prove the concept that our concept work that we get valorization of material saved because as you know, as you can see, we have financial interest in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's important that it works upfront before we even make the offer where we can work together and improve the operation. Um, and, and I think I think the a very important point and i think it's part of your question as well with we've assessed projects all over the world we've assessed many many projects we have not found a project yet that does not work i did not expect that was going to be how you're going to end that <laughs> sentence <laughs> so you haven't found one yet that you've assessed 
that does not work. There are some that, that, that are more, uh, economical for us. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, and, and there are some that, uh, can be challenging in creating a business case, uh, for the investment. But, uh, to this point, we've, we've found a, a way through that, uh, each time. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, it's not a matter of picking and choosing 10% it will work at, uh, it, it's applicable across the industry. It's just a matter of finding the, in developing a system that works, determining what, you know, the amount of capital required to do that and, uh, uh, and developing a business case to support it. So, it, you know, it's, it's quite an extensive process. I, and Lynn, I'd, I'd just add to your point. I mean, we've started with our first operation in 2016. Um, since then, we've got over 30 operations around the world. So, yeah, and that's a, that's a, we're focused on different uh, uh, minerals and the global uh, mineral space. Um, so, so that, that I think is testament to, you know, the value that we, we offer. Um, and, and from here, we, we'd see broad applications uh, um, across, um, you know, on a global basis. Yeah, the entrepreneurial side of me is just hearing 18,000 tailings ponds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But it does lead me to the other question, though, is some of these old, uh, these old sites, and we can, we can edit this out if, I'm, if I'm, not, I'm not trying to get into trade secrets or anything, but, or, or your business development plans, but it, it does seem like an, um, is there opportunities into other sites um, that are not in operation or waste? Uh, maybe they're still operating, but they've got waste piles. Um, is there an opportunity for that? Well, let me, let me jump in here if, if I can. Yeah. The short answer is yes. Okay. You know, uh, you know, the Somerset, our business development project has been first reduce the amount of waste that is going to these, uh, these sites. Mm -hmm. Number two, treat the remaining waste. So you don't have to have tailings dams. And then number three, and what we're working on some projects now, uh, they're under development, is to take and assess some of these existing tailings dams that 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 may or may not even be uh, functioning today, and then develop processes to extract the vitam, valuable minerals from those, and then also that reduces the uh, environmental footprint. So that's that's uh, the natural progression of our business. And we are assessing some of those projects as we speak. You're you're a private company, right? I can't buy shares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm and, and this, and we're applying this across, as we said, several different minerals. But you know, we, we used uh, metallurgical steel making coal as one example. Mm -hmm. But it it ranges from that, be it copper, be it platinum group metals. So it, I, I won't go into all of them, but there's a series of these things that, that we're now participating in. So, so uh, again, our, our objective as a group, as a team is to continue to grow and expand across the entire mineral space uh, to improve the efficiency, decrease the environmental footprint and improve water recovery and extract minerals that have previously been discarded that have become an environmental uh, nuisance. Uh, that's that's the business we're in. It's um, I I hope I hope I can uh, convince everybody to come back on and do a part two of this because I, I feel like we're kind of almost just getting into the meat as we run out of sort of the time that we set aside to do the interview for you. Um, but I want to leave with one last question: is is just circling all the way back to the partnership. Um, I think Michael, you said a marriage made in heaven was one example you used, and and just I, I want to touch on a very specific part: is you're dealing with mining. It's very high stakes. Um, you've you've created a business model that sort of lowers that stakes for the lo lowers those stakes for the client. So though that's an amazing thing. But then between yourselves, as you're developing and trying to improve the technology, the back and forth, the feedback from clients. How do you manage that? Um, you know, and now for years and years managed it. Uh, I'm just curious, but maybe both of you could answer, or or anybody who wants to jump in on that. I, I, Michael Michael ref, uh, referred to it was a you know it was a uh, partnership made in heaven. You know, I, I I think the fact that we have common objectives, mm. 
we have we, we have common approaches we understand the need and we agree on the importance of continuing to invest in technology the development of technology the continuous improvement of technology the uh, expansion into new areas and we work with that we we do those things hand in glove together we're both fully invested mm. in in uh, uh, and we both understand the importance of this business uh, approach across the mining space. So uh, I don't think we've ever had any questions between each other. Uh, we, 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 we've worked together uh, and continue to work together every day. Uh, Michael and I probably have, we probably average five, six calls a, a, a week probably, or if not more, uh, you know, discussing opportunities, discussing challenges, discussing, you know, ways to, to make things better. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that's, that's my, my view on this. And Anthony, you, you may have a view and Michael as well, but, uh, it's, uh, I don't think it's a relationship you could plan for. It's just one that has matured and developed, uh, fallen, uh, its natural path. I think, you know, I put it this way, in addition to this, as we are an ISO certified company, there is by ISO requested continuous improvement. Originally, when ISO was approved for something like this, everybody thought, oh, it's just an ISO. But if you follow that, and that's what we follow naturally, a continuous improvement program, which is comes at, at this time, it comes naturally. I mean, everybody, you have to maintain it, and that's the only way you improve and you get better. And that's what we do org organically and naturally. Uh, sorry, what was the reference? I ISO? ISO. ISO certification. Meaning basically ISO certification is the way you manufacture or your way you run a process. Mm -hmm. And it's not only that you have to uh, manufacture only one thing. It also requests continuous <laughs> improvement. Mm. So that is comes automatically for us. That is natural for us to um, certify have all our documentation, SOPs, everything in line as we can follow in this whole process of improvement. So that's what's that's why com where companies measured by as well. Right. And sharing those values yes. between the two organizations. Um gentlemen, I, I I'm gonna leave usually I <laughs> wrap up, but I, I want to while this is on there, I I don't want to make this an uh, you know uh just just wrap up with three people on that share a lot of knowledge amongst themselves um, within the industry. So is, is there anything that we missed that you just sort of want to share or, or add um, that we didn't cover um, in, my, in my stream of questions? I, I, I think the only thing I will close on for those that are, are, are viewing your show is that, uh, you know, if, if you have a need, if you have an interest, then, then you should get in touch with us. You know, uh, 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 we're, we're always eager to, to look into projects, look at opportunities, work with those to solve these issues, where, you know, both in productivity, water recovery, uh, valorization, tailings management, uh, regardless of what mineral it is, regardless of where it is. You know, we're interested in doing that. Uh, you know, I think, you know, again, this has been, you know, somewhat of, of an abbreviated explanation of what we do and how we do it. Uh, but we, we'd love to talk to to individuals uh, that that are participating in this mining space that 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 have that uh, uh, have these challenges and uh, and uh, uh, see where it goes. Well, you know, when we started this show, one of our biggest challenges was when we would tell people, "Yeah, we want to talk for anywhere from forty five minutes to an hour and fifteen, somewhere in that range." And at first, everybody just thought that didn't make any sense. Me being one of them, <laughs> actually, um, it was it was my business partner Rory who said no. Like these sort of long form, this is the way to go. None, no more of these short little clips. And what everybody realized really quick is that it's not enough time. You just sort of start digging in and opening up all these topics. And, and I wish we could talk more. Um, and and I hope we do because there is a lot we could cover. Um, Anthony, you were mentioning some of the sort of future. Um, investments that you're making in recovery and or um, removal of things that you don't want. 
that seems like a whole other show in itself. So, um, but thank you both for coming, or thank you both, thank you all three of you for coming on the show and doing this. Um, and again, thank you for being patient at the beginning. Uh, it was quite the delay, but uh, we, I'm glad we got it done uh, because it's not just important for, for both your companies, but also for the industry to understand what's available. So I really do appreciate your time. Thank you. And we, and we appreciate it as You're well. Welcome. Thank you. Look forward Thanks. to speaking to you in the future. Thanks. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, that's been another episode of Mining Now. Um, that one's This one's filmed. We have Australia, the U.S., and Canada all got in on the fun. So uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank for people that promote the show and are subscribing and sharing um, because it just wouldn't happen without all that support. So thank you, and we'll see you on the next episode of Mining Now.